Facebook assumes is that, um, that your friends are how you discover everything, right? And what I actually think is it's actually something different in content, which is it's content that causes you to discover everything, right? That what you watch and what you read and what you listen to is far more powerful. And if you can find that tribe of people who do that, and they may not look like you. I hope they don't look like me, right? Um, uh, I hope they look more like Brad Pitt, right? Which is what I see when I look at myself. No. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they, uh, you know, these people, I have, may have more in common. It's clear that Jack and I listen to the same, some of the same things, right? When, when you listen to what he gave at the summary at the end, those are things that I listen to. He and I may have more in common with a 16-year-old, right? Than we're supposed to, according to whatever demographic research there are. And certainly, we may not want to share those things with our friends on Facebook, right? Uh, because we don't, you know, that's just not the dialogue we have with our friends, right? And so what we have found is, in general, content is actually more of an anonymous experience, right? There's some content you share, right? And you say, aha, I love this band, right? And you want it out there. But a lot of times you want to listen to stuff and you don't want your, whole, your friends knowing it, right? It's part of why I have left Facebook is I'm tired of, of having these widgets to show up that tell people everything I'm reading, right? And uh, you know, I want it to be an anonymous experience, you know, uh, and uh, and I want to be able to to do my stuff without having to share everything to the world. The other thing that we know is that content is the best predictor of what other content, what advertising, and everything else you will consume. Right? The content is, forms the best view of what tribe you are in. And I don't use that word accidentally. Uh, we bought a company called Tribe. Uh, uh, was how we started. And Tribe had a problem, but they were they were. They were among the first social networks. They were actually brilliant guys, uh, but they were just too early. They were pre-standardization. They had a lot of problems with technology. And they just Still were early. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Uh, and uh, and they also had a CEO. They had a CEO they didn't like called uh, you know who, who 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 they decided they wanted to get rid of. So they called their board and they said fire the CEO. And the board said, well, you guys, you're losing money. There's other things coming along that look better than you, but if you want us to keep you going because you all like each other, here's what the deal is. Double your revenues, which is double your page views, and we'll let you keep going and we'll get rid of the CEO. So they, they had all these tribes, and they said, hmm, if we could just get people to go join one extra tribe, we'll be fine. So the first thing they tried, because they were a social network, is they referred friends tribes, right? And it was a disaster, right? They were like, don't tell, me, don't tell my friends what tribes I'm in. This is ridiculous. I don't want them to know, right? Then they tried demographics. All the demographic information for all the people who registered. That was even worse, right? That didn't work. Then they said, we're going to try the radically opposite approach. We're going to just look at what people do. And that's what ultimately got them to double page views and sell to us, right? And so we know from you know, a fairly large set of data that this stuff is really powerful, right? And, and what you actually do is far more powerful than what you say about yourself, what you think about yourself, what you may represent, that what you do becomes far more powerful. I think that's the core again of, of where's the money and all this, right? 